Welcome back, everyone, to LCS Challengers League, and game number one is done. Spyrax, dude, he was the hero that made it happen and brought the MU comeback. Yeah, I, I mean, that Serena shuffle, I watched it again. We threw it up on our Twitter, at Path to LCS. If you don't follow it already, get a plug in there. Um, I, that was such a big play from Spyrax, man. I love how he hid from Vision, kind of faked that he was basing or not. DLC overextending into that brush was definitely too far, but Spyrax sticking around, not committing to basing and TPing back to that fight was what enabled them to really turn it and they managed their health bars really well, played that fight really well. And from there on out, this game was won 75% of the time by TLC, but just that play and MU's Baron, they closed it out very cleanly and end up 1-0 in the series. And, and I want to bring up to uh, bring it back to something that was said earlier, and it's that Maryville University is a completely different shape from them coming into this series. It wasn't just a team that gets blown out by morale and gets stomped afterwards. No, they kept it together. And a lot of yeah. that uh, from interviews we had with Niles is just how player, uh, how do I say, player focused the team has been. It's mostly player ran. That's the word I'm looking for. Where Niles is leading a lot of these scrim reviews. They're doing it together. They have the camaraderie. They don't get mad at each other. They try and keep each other in check, and uh, I mean the results speak for themselves. Uh, speaks for itself, Kobe. Yeah, I mean it's definitely a roster that has a little bit more Asian experience on it. Uh, when you you know bring in people like Niles and Yuji Spyrax have been really pillars of Challengers League for the past uh, you know five splits now, uh, competing yeah. in their fifth split. And I I mean it speaks for itself what's going on at MU. Uh, I, I was very pleasantly surprised with how quickly they were able to turn around that game and close things out. I think that's really well executed by Maryville. And excited to see more and see now if TLC can continue to kind of stay disciplined, make sure they're playing out their comps correctly. It got really tough for the Kaisa to auto later on with that build. Uh, and yeah, it just felt like TLC kind of ran out of gas. And for the most part, they had a good early game. It was a 4.7K, yeah. 4.6K lead that got flipped on its head, um, all because of that one Spyrax play and, of course, getting the shutdown onto Jenkins, who was having a phenomenal early start. So this brings it back to the early game plans of TLC, where it feels like we're having the right ideas, we're having the right execution. Attack the TF in the top side. It got uh, a lot of good early kills coming out. Jenkins uh, won me too. Yeah, <laughs> Jenkins was just beast moding it. But then everything else kind of falling apart after that, that's where we really need to see it uh, worked on. I think it's really tough to play out three lanes against a TF, and I think TLC fell victim of that a couple times, uh, as, as like Romer was under focus and Jenkins as well. I think you have to play out the 4-1 and almost kind of starve out the Jace uh, it, or the Hui. It, it's a little tricky, but uh, not something that TLC was able to manage, and part of why MU was able to bounce back in that game uh, again, I mean, props to them, man. They, they really stuck with it. I, I thought it was a really nice early game from TLC. There wasn't really a lot that Maryville could do. I think Maryville took a couple fights that weren't theirs early, but man, they found that angle eventually. And they cashed in, uh, I mean, tenfold on it, right? Turned the game completely on their head. As, uh, I think TLC, looking at this graph, they'll be very, uh, you know, fortunate for them that they don't have to face Spyrax Azir again. As <laughs> Spyrax Azir, man, it's it's a little bit it's too good. Else. It's 4-0 it's at this point. And again, like if FlyQuest spent all their time and energy to take away Spyrax Azir on the team that he was in for the last two years, I think it says a lot about how good he is on that champion. Uh, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. Now, second most played his way, so we see if that gets denied this game. I, I do want to pull up the stats just because I think it's very interesting. In Season 13 last year, he played 20 games on Azir, 4.0 KDA, won 60% of the games. He's very, very capable on it. It is his, his most, most played, played, right? Yeah, yeah. by it's far. In, most played in his career. I remember back when I started casting in 2020, this guy was on Supernova Dark Matter. And that team, <laughs> there was some weird stuff going on with like a, a coach <laughs> or whatever. I don't remember everything that went on. They had like a diamond top liner, but... I remember watching the games like they were beating teams better than them. I'm like, wow, this Spyrex guy is really good at the Zier. Um, and yeah, still to this day. I mean, still continuing. Good to see. Uh, one thing I like for TLC is they do keep banning away that Callista. So not allowing Scary Jerry Zyko to have that hyper aggressive lane that they would really love to go for. Um, but as MU are now on the red side, they've already had their fun with the Twisted Fate. They can't play it anymore. So they're saying, TLC, you can't do it either. I mean, I think Maryville probably bans Varus here. Oh, they ban Rumble. So Varus is on the board. Also, Oriana. Uh, Senna as well. I'm really curious kind of where TLC prioritizes those champs on their list of what's good or not. I expect to see an early Ori grab. Uh, it is a champ that Spyrax, I know he can play it, but he has yet to play it this split. Instead, it's actually going to be the Varus. And I very much expect to see 
Wei or Oriana picked up here just to have range to threaten Varus yeah. uh, over on TLC. I mean, that was sort of the wager right there with that Rumble ban. Take away one of Jenkins' picks, but now you're giving the wager over to TLC, whether it's that Varus or Oriana. You know they would love to take the Varus because that plays exactly to what Scary Jerry and Zyko like to do. That is why TLC cannot allow it to go over to Maryville University. Whoa. However, Draven Whoa. getting locked in by Scary Jerry. Okay. We've seen this once before. It did do some pretty heavy work, but man, man, we're, we're staying aggro. I think that this is an early Draven, and when I see early Dravens, I like range. I think range gets really good on both sides. So mm -hmm. I like how Maryville, first off, they lock in the Ori, because that's a pick that can really threaten Draven. But if I'm TLC now, like, I'm looking at Maokai, right? Like, what are things that makes it tough for Draven to auto? I'm looking at Aatrox. Like, it's mm -hmm. really tough for Draven to uh, pilot team fights against champs that make it hard to auto. Um, I think that that's going to be something that TLC can really think about as we're going to see Keel. Hover Fiddlesticks, because, you know, Fiddlesticks is sneaking back in, and Keel does love he his is. Fiddlesticks, but ends up being a Rel. They can hold that flex. I, I expect it to be in the hands of Keel, though, moving forward. Yeah, I saw Fiddles in, uh, I think it was LCK recently. It was uh, yeah. a lot of fun to see those champions get through, because I remember at the start of the season, uh, I talked to Keel specifically, and he had promised me there were going to be a lot of AP champions this split. Uh... And they nerfed Storm Surge, <laughs> and it got sad again, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. But uh, next pick Sin coming in, uh, we Syndra. do get some pretty good uh, pick potential now for TLC with the Syndra locking. It does make it hard for Draven to auto-attack and can really set up for something like an Aatrox later on. I wouldn't be surprised if Niles just slams. Uh, Aatrox isn't the best here, but I think Niles, I like, wouldn't be surprised if he just slammed his top laner. Um, he's mostly been playing the Aatrox, Cassante, and a bit of Rumble. Gnar could be an option here, though, if he just wants to take that and ban out some other things. If not, and it's grab support. So... I, the reason that I think that Rao is going to jungle is because Draven and Nautilus both have ways to cancel the Rao engage. Uh, so that dismount can be buffered pretty much by Dredgeline, as well as the stand aside from Draven to get Rao out of that. Uh, so I think Maryville banning supports, they are with me in the sense that they're like looking at Rao and they're like, you know, I'd hate to be Rao playing against Draven plus Nautilus. So we're going to take away the good supports that are uh, going up against Draven and Nautilus. I think Brahms is a really appropriate ban. Nautilus, uh, excuse me, uh, Nocturne getting uh, banned away as uh, the Alistair, the next ban. I I'm still looking at the Draven. I'm still very, very excited about that pick because last yeah. time we saw it, it was the uh, Mirage Alliance game. And Scary Jerry oh, he got super laid... Did, did you see some of the kills he got and how he got them? He had like a slither of health and was yeah. still baiting Prismal to stay in the fight. He got and getting the fun. kills. It, it was disgusting. It was a uh, 17-something KDA, so... Yeah, right. yeah, you can see why this man has such a good uh, score. Vi Nocturne taking away. Those are the two best story combos. I'm curious if they save five pick for Yuji or not. I mean, he's been doing this a lot. Niles is comfortable blind picking. I think the power, what's new about this patch, though, is that there are other Ori pairings that are still on the table. I was going to talk about Wukong, as Wukong uh, is... You can't ban out all three now if you're going to that through Orianna. Uh, but instead, it's going to be the Yuji Lee Sin. Uh, as Rel already showing, and now we have strength for Jenkins in the top side with this Renekton. Curious what the pick is now for what I expect to be Kim down. Probably Nautilus. Or, uh, Renata. Renata in the Nautilus. I, I expect to see a Kimmy Renata. Yeah, I, I, I mean, more things that make it harder for the Draven, right? And yeah. Either of those could really do it. Um... I mean, yeah, yeah, Nautilus was already taken by Maryville University. Wow. So instead, okay. uh, that's gonna take the Rel into the bot lane. I do like Kim Down's Rel. I just think it's a really difficult game to play Rel uh, if you're mm. looking at Draven plus not. But Xin Zhao does enable you to pretty much win against Lee Sin, uh, especially with a Renekton and Syndra as lanes. That's some good gank setup yeah. uh, to help the Sin. So Zin's going to be happy <laughs> going everywhere. Curious what Niles decides to grab. I mean, it's screaming Gnar, uh, just given Niles' pool and what he plays. Mm. Yeah, so I expect to see Nar. It is uh, a 2v2, though, topside, that if you hit the right windows as Zin plus Renekton, you can win. Uh, so, yeah. I'm, again, I think that I talked a lot about how last game, Keel kind of had a lot of options of where to go. I think this game, both junglers are going to have to really do a good job of managing the map. This party wants to go help the Draven lane, if you're Yuji, right? Uh, but also, I think defending Nar on the top side is something that, if you defend it well, uh, like whoever counter ganks in that matchup actually can win it and turn things around. Uh, so I, I'm interested to see if Yuji tries to find a window where he's able to answer Keel on the top side. 
I don't know. I, I get excited by uh, Yuji playing the Lee Sin because he's played it twice so far, and every game he's played it, he's won. Uh, the, the great thing about Lee Sin is you do have so much early pressure and early momentum that, uh, as, as you said, there still is that pressure to stay towards the top side. But if you just want bot lane to explode, this is a place where you can stay around and continue going for that Maraville playstyle where it has been Get Scary Jerry and Zyko, a phenomenal lead, and the rest of the map will follow. Yeah, it's something, I mean, we'll see if they can follow up as well as last time, Desirex, because, I mean, it was a back-and-forth game. I think each team showed the ability to play as a five-stack mm -hmm. in the last one. It's just Maryville they ended up having that one big play that really turned things on its head. want to see if, if we can see TLC really find that win from start to finish that they're looking for. Uh, I know that you know, they feel like they've improved a lot as a camp. Uh, I, I caught up a little bit with Keel before the game started today. Um, and... Yeah, uh, he just felt like they've been changing their identity a little bit, and he feels like, personally, he's been playing a bit better. I, I think their identity is definitely skewing towards early games. Uh, and, you know, if you aren't able to execute an early game comp from start to finish, then things like last game can happen. And I feel like that's been a lot of the losses that we've seen out of TLC this year. And for TLC, I, I, I talked with uh, Kim Dan about some of their losses, and what he had told me was, like, morale isn't really that down. They're not yeah. that low. Regular season is the regular season. They still have to make playoffs. Um, that's the biggest thing on their mind. But for the most part, they understood the growing pains they were going to have to go through. You had mentioned one before, which is Romer and the language barrier. Uh, Kill having to uh, shape up some of his jungle pathings uh, and really uh, match up with some of the uh, jungle junglers that we have in the season. Uh, keeping that strong mental and keeping everything really focused, it's starting to look like it's paying off for TLC now where uh, we're seeing things come together. Yeah, I know from talking with Kim Down as well earlier in the split, it, like he's like, hey, we just got to trust the process, right? We've, yeah. we've seen some signs where the process is getting better. And, you know, not to be, you know, the 76ers NBA guy, which I know you don't know what I'm talking about there, Desirex, but there's a great meme running in the NBA where it's always about trust the process for yeah. the 76ers, but they've never put it together because they're just, they're the 76ers, you know? Sometimes that happens in sports. Sometimes you're just done trusting the process. Yeah. Sometimes we just end up in the CLG fate category. Oh no. Oh no. That was fun early on, the split. Talking about how Aaron, like, doubled his wins in ACL after a whole split, winning one series of best of threes. Good times. As very aggressive midday matchup. I will, I will say, this isn't exactly how this midday matchup's supposed to go. I think Ori is favored early as her Q cooldown is lower than Syndra's. Uh, it used to be Syndra favored, but after the Q changes to Syndra and kind of that mini rework, it is, uh, it's Ori favored, but so far, Rummer doing a really nice job of keeping Ori at bay and playing around those E cooldowns, which is really, uh, the window that you have to trade in if you want to win this matchup. And these are two, uh, pretty high-level mid laners. I, I, someone we're gonna see a little bit later is gonna be Onap, but when I talked to him about his, uh, opinion of the mid lane pull, he actually believes Spyrax's second best mid laner in the league, uh, mm -hmm. second to Quad, for that matter. Yeah. That's, uh, if you talk to a lot of mids, that's kind of the, uh, like, what they talk about. I will give Romer some credit, though. As specifically with laning, Romer's been very good. Uh, again, I think TLC, they, they play for early game, but uh, Romer, on average, out of all mids, has been uh, leading in gold dip at 15. So props to Romer on that. As a really nice lane phase. Like, even if it's close, him getting Spyrax's TP first, given the pressure that he was able to put down, that's outperforming the matchup. Seeing this pathing coming out from Yuji, able to grab the Scuttle Crab. There is a hard shove in the bottom lane, as well as a situation oh. in the mid lane where he can go for a gank. Oh. Sonic Wave doesn't land, though, so Romer should be okay as Kill is there in the back pocket. He has the opportunity to turn here. We'll get Yuji's okay, flash. Charger, follows. He's going to use the flash. Three talent the strike distance. doesn't get the knock up on Yuji. The distance from Spyrax's Ori was huge there. Made sure that Yuji was able to escape. The third strike from Zin's Q. And two flashes burn for one. Maryville will be very happy about that mid as easy to revisit a flashless Syndra or a flashless Ori. And MU netting that flash on Romer, definitely something that Yuji can look at later on. So far in the bottom lane, it's been a pretty decent tech coming out from Kim down. Every time Zyko gets the hook in, he goes immediately for the stun as uh, the Nautilus is going to get pushed in. But the big thing for that is it means the Nautilus doesn't get his oh, no. snare. But we oh, got to no. look at this mid lane again because I mean, there's no is... flash for Romer. Oh, no. This is a guaranteed kill. First blood comes uh, out for Yuji. Romer, I, uh, 
Uh, that, that's uh, for me that has to be a miscommunication or Romer just misunderstanding the map we just had each jungler trade out the raptors so your jungler took topside raptors and you're hovering that bot side of the map when those raptors were also exposed for yuji he's playing right into mu's hands with that uh, I, I think Romer that's a pretty big mistake for him he needs to be hovering the other side of the map even when yeah. his jungler reset just I mean even where the lanes have prio right his bot lanes getting pushed in the Renekton's uh, on the top side, they just saw Yuji bot. He escaped bot. That's a really poor mistake from Romer. Yeah, very unfortunate. It's going to give yeah. uh, Maryville University expensive. Uh, this lead right now. And that's money going over to uh, Lee Sin in the early game. Lee Sin can dominate these lanes. And now he's looking to dominate over in the bottom lane as uh, Spawn and Kim down. They don't have a ward right there. The jungler waits. Already hooking a land from Psycho, but again, that buffer from Kim down ensures that the snare doesn't land from the auto attack of the Nautilus. Yeah, I like that call out. Uh, we have Deathstrux. I, I think Kim down again. I, it, it's a tough matchup to play Rowan, dude, just because you can never really engage. I talked about how the dredge line and the stand aside can cancel that W engage. You only have Q as an option. Kim down using that defensively just to kind of survive this thing has been going quite well. And now that really delayed the dragon timer. So Kill's able to get here. He's up a level and MBU's in trouble. Yeah. Yuji's at half health oh, already. No. He doesn't really have an escape route. Romer's going to take down Yuji. And this dragon, thank you for the leash, yeah. Maraville. Team Liquid will claim it. I, I mean, going for that bot gank, like props to spawn and Kim down. Like he's playing the matchup out correctly. And that wasted time enabled Kill to rotate back over and take the first two objectives of the game. So that's a really good start for TLC. Uh, I know the mid daft hurt from Romer, but the recovery from Kiel in the bot lane here really well played on the side of TL. Romer's going to love that after uh, getting first blooded, get a little bit of revenge on Yuji for that kill that happened. But Syndra getting that champion going always means that pick potential, that fog of war becomes so much more deadly. A little bit of a skirmish coming over here. It's the return of Renekton and Jenkins wants a bite of Niles. Yuji wants a bite of the Raptors. He finds Kiel. Spite stolen by Kiel. And Zyko's here to follow up. Here, comes here we Kiel's go. Kiel's going to be locked down. Kiel does not have flash, so Yuji will complete the kill. Meanwhile, in the top lane, fight coming out. Meganar soon for Niles. We'll give him a little bit more health to get away from Jenkins. Niles is going to look for some sort of R back into the wall. He doesn't want to take the extended trade against Jenkins, but... When you are a mega, I, I think burning that cooldown. Oh, his R is down. Never mind, not an option. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Yuji, red buff on the menu as he did take down Kiel, but Kiel is sprinting back. We could see a third fight in a row uh, between these junglers as Kim down and Spawn just pulling that buff, making sure that Yuji can't uh, burst it down. It'll ensure that Kiel's able to pick up the red buff, which is big because he's going to want that for the next grub spawn. I love it. Two junglers just throwing down going at it i mean two junglers we've held in very very high regards yeah. for that matter i mean uh a kill uh he was always in that conversation uh last year about being most valuable prospect and now we're seeing that out of yuji who's putting on the performance of his life i, I mean it's it's pretty wild because like you know one of the biggest advocates for keel was actually spawn uh the, the coach at tlc at the time yeah. like, he thought that keel was playing really really well so i was not surprised to see keel end up on DLC in this offseason is given that Kiel did have such a good split and the coaching staff already held him in high regard. Uh, and Yuji has always been in the running for most valuable prospect. Every single split, he's managed to sneak Every his way split. in the top five. Uh, and, and now Kiel beat him out last split. And I would say that given team performances and individual performances, Yuji's having a better split this time as Kim. That's the W getting canceled. A lot of damage from Scary Jerry. Uh, oh. Already, Chain of Corruptions comes out, gets instantly cleansed, and there's a gank showing up in the bottom lane as Yuji has arrived on top of the ward. A great hook from Psycho, but it cost him his life. Now Scary Jerry trying to bail out. He needs to cash in before he goes oh, down. Yuji doesn't have anything left, and Spawn and Kim Down withstand the barrage. I mean, Kim Down and Spawn just cannot be broken. Uh, they're going to have to send a fourth member to take these guys down. Spyrox is spotted. Kim Down and Spawn going to try and sneak out. Right, Shockwave goes out, but it lands onto absolutely nothing, and Spyrax wow. has to burn his flash. Oh, oh Spyrax, command attack, dissonance to follow. We'll get something back in the name of Maraville. I mean, still all the pressure that TLC were able to draw, but well worth it looking across the map. Romer was able to at least get a plate. Kill stuck, uh, stole some camps. Yuji's really far behind the Zin Zhao now. That is important because... Yeah. Like, Zen, if you get ahead, you're just a stat check, right? You only have one way that you can go that is in. So 
if you have Heal able to get in there as this Zen, that could be a, a real big advantage that TLC can build over Yuji oh. and Lee. Speaking of Kill going in, Niles. Oh, Kill's feeling himself right now. He's got the momentum on his side, and a simple gank in the top lane means Niles will not oh, have Roman flash, Roman. but Roamer's not content with just flash being burned. He wants Niles' life. A third comes, and again, Spyrax, he just TP'd back mid after that play, so this is still the bot lane play having ramifications. Roamer was able to get up there, finds the kill. That's six scrubs again going over to TLC. Based on the play of the bot lane, I know that they fell, but the time that came down and spawned bot won TLC the rest of the map yeah. in that sequence. They played that very well, bot lane. Absolutely. The fact that they didn't die. I mean, there were so many members there. You had Spyrax, you had Yuji there as well as the bottom lane. They played that great. Still, still able to uh, take that barrage. I mean, unfortunately yeah. falling to Spyrax at the very end there, but that was very well played nonetheless to waste that time of TLC and to give kill control of this map. Now, on the back half, I think Maryville, what they really want is this dragon. Six grubs again over to TLC. Renekton can push that lead if he is able to get into a lane alone. But the control right now for Maryville, if you take a look at the minimap, really good control wards from Maryville. As they have all three of the brushes in River control warded, as well as a ward on the red brush for TLC. So it's going to uh, be some time and effort for Kiel to get in here and sweep some of this vision. Really tough to do against the Draven, who... Doing those axes, we'll still have that bot lane priority. And I know Yuji still wants to find something in this bottom lane because you, you got quite a good amount of stacks on Scary Jerry, who's just waiting to cash in. He wasn't able to cash in on those last plays. Even with the health bar being too low, it was far too risky. And now the uh, dragon being called Zyko will spot this out and get spotted out in the process. Just kind of stands there, says, hello, I am here. I am giving you my presence. This is a warning. He's threatening the hook. He'll actually snuck into the pit to try and uh, get away from the dredge line. Zyko's just able to wait here. All right, hook comes in. It lands on the Kim down, following through. Magnet Storm, the combo is nasty, and Yuji has oh, the fail. But Scary Jerry's able to cash in. Gets his first kill, finds it on the support, wants to chase down Spawn. And I'm sorry, Spawn, you don't got any mobility. Taste the Ooh. axes of Scary Jerry. Spawn played that as well as he could. He tried to get him as low as possible before he used the empowered Q from the W. Not quite able to take down the Draven as Scary Jerry lives. And the big key to that fight was that Yuji didn't fall at the start. He was yeah. forced out. So oh, yeah. yes, TLC walk away with that dragon, but they drop 2k gold across the map in the process, given the fight being a win for MU. Draven got a cash out and plates going over to Niles. We take another look. I mean, they focused down to the right oh, target, yeah. but that dredge line hmm. from Zyko was huge. It stopped Spawn from being able to follow up onto the Wee Sin and isolated him so that Scary Jerry could just run him down. I, I'm really curious what the cash-in was for Scary Jerry. Probably got a good sum of gold, somewhere at 700 on stacks alone, Sig maybe 600, but a double kill with that means that you're going to have a lot of income to really work with, and there it is. Uh, the Ghost Blade, as well as a Sheen picked up by Scary Jerry as he currently leads the gold charts. I mean, look at this early game. It's been really back and forth. And uh, again, MU, a big swing there. Uh, about 2k gold going back in their favor. A lot of that on... Oh, boy, Spawn. Oh, max range hook from Psycho. Spawn is caught. And Yuji reaps the rewards. Spawn had Flash available. He thought he escaped the dredge line, but Zyko in the hitbox and Nautilus Q had other ideas. Spawn falls. Yuji able to get a little bit more for himself. MU take complete control over the bot side. Fight's going over to Scary Jerry, and no answer for TLC yeah. elsewhere. So another straight win for Maryville. Yeah. Really nice hook from Psycho. And this is still the issues of TLC. Early game, looking good. Things start to fall apart the more the game progresses. And this time, Maraville were able to accelerate that moment. Because look at the gold you're getting on Scary Jerry. Just grabbed the turret plate. Psycho's been so damn active. And Yuji, a complete menace. Over the wall with the Sonic Wave, Resonating Strike. And Romer disengages with Scatter of the Weak. Yuji's still sticking around. Him down a little bit squishy with that Glacial Path. You are able to get on top of him. Yuji just gonna clean this one up. I, I mean, again, MU, I love how they stick around and take all the camps away from Kiel. Because Kiel was pretty far ahead of Yuji, but now the Eclipse <laughs> finish, and Yuji able to duel and taking away those camps, the jungle oh, matchup is pretty much even. It's Revisit, a death squad. It will be spotted, and Kiel can kind of wrap around on the hover. Kiel won't be spotted for a little bit. He could find Yuji isolated. There's a potential collapse for TLC if MU overextend. Spawn, be very, very careful. I know you got flash up, but that's all you really have to escape. Stalking the bottom lane, recalls will come through. 
and relief for the bot lane of TLC. Honestly, kind of using Draven to make sure they get this wave in regardless and hide a recall timer is a good play from MU. I mean, they pick up some tempo on the map. Jenkins got a wave in deep top. This is the wave responding from Niles. He takes a lot off this turret. Keep in mind, MU, they're 0 for 12 on Grubs in this series. Uh, and it, it really hasn't mattered. I, I, in TLC, they have all the neutrals right now. But if this gold can be big enough for MU to really push and force TLC around, if they pick up that third dragon in that cloud, I mean, they're chilling from there. All right, Kim down, come in with Roamer over towards the Rift Herald. Zyko has been called. Hill shows up, Kim down Spawns now on here. the chase. He Fox wants to find no EG. Oh, catching him out. The chain of CC was just too much, and yeah. Roamer will find a shutdown. You want Niles as well, but Niles, too much on the health bar. Scatter the week currently on cooldown. We'll get underneath the tower. TLC, they keep capitalizing on these neutrals. Good engage from Kim down. Uh, it's just not a fight that MU can take. I don't think they were expecting Spawn to walk straight to the Herald. The Spyrax is bot with no TP right now, so you are guaranteed numbers disadvantage, and TLC is still pretty strong at this point of the game. Easy win for them. They take another neutral, and also a turret, so really yeah. good play from TLC. Uh, again, kind of a back-and-forth game here, Tesserux. They uh, take a chunk out of the gold lead for MU there. We're really swinging for the fences on a lot of these plays, and for TLC, you've reaped the benefits of having a Syndra that is pretty fed the very moment almost uh finished with that second item has the needless on top of it uh, for maryville university i mean look at the whole middle of the map uh both the draven the oriana the lee sin all able to get kills lee sin will fall off a little bit later but getting those kills on to your carries is so crucial for yuji and he's able to do that i think the big difference here is the the 80 itemization is <laughs> We end up maybe looking for a play here on the Niles as he's sticking around. He cannot stick around there. Goodbye. Oh, uh, yeah. Link, can you miss it? Niles is dead. 10 seconds before Dragon, TLC showing up on the top side. If they're quick about this, they can get this wave in and try and contest the Dragon. It looks like TLC kind of opting to give this third one and instead play for a Herald play on the top side. They're just going to draw MU to them. They're forcing Maraville to make a move. Zyko, the only one uh, going towards Herald. that top side, and now Spyrax will be able to join. Pretty big charge onto the Herald, and you can see the Twitch chat is doing their work. Maryville University might be itching for a fight right now, but the scatter of the week onto Spyrax could be the dissuasion that they need. I wouldn't rode the Herald, man. You could have you gotten more grubs. That's Twitch unlucky. Uh, hold on, Yuji. Yuji, it's not your jungle anymore, man. Wow. TLC on the rotation you should be expecting this if you're yuji i mean tlc really shoring things up here uh, they dropped the play uh to maryville but like you know kind of got them back in the game it was a great fight for maryville but now two fights in a row where maryville opted into contesting an objective where they had four people on the map and tlc yeah. had five and then that one is kind of getting picked one by one in the top side jungle the Herald play comes in. TLC trying to stay on the map and extend this. Dang. MU have some bases here. We got a fight. Oh, they're calling over Scary Jerry, but Teleport comes in. Niles running critically low, has to run out of the fight. Scary Jerry now looking to take it over to Jenkins while Zyko gets picked by Kill. Flash over the it's wall okay from Zyko. Here comes the Shockwave. Now Kill is low. Scary Jerry chasing the croc in the river. TLC going on to retreat. Taking a few of those fruits to get the health back up as Mayor of the University look to regroup. That was good from MU. I, Niles managed his health bar really nicely, and Maryville kited themselves out so that they have a health bar advantage going into this dragon. They will deny soul point. This will be all theirs. Maryville University, careful no way. with that last fight. Okay. Attempting the steal is going to be rumored. Doesn't uh, really have a chance right there with the uh, smite, but you never know. You never really know. Maryville University, it's not a lead, but they're able to equalize. A lot of the way this game is going, and TLC don't want to stop their momentum just yet. Small Eyeballing Spyrax. Spyrax is going to be Roamer. Roamer able to drop that W onto his head. Spyrax still withstanding, but there's the scout of the week. Spyrax Ooh. tries to flash out of the queue, but it's far too late. Ooh. Whirling death means another cash in for Scary Jerry to equalize it out. Okay, I mean, Roamer trades one for one and gets the flash out of the Oriana. That's valuable as Niles trying to kite out Jenkins, doing so successfully has enough points in the W where he can just kind of scurry away. Yep. MU is still fighting a tooth and nail. Took their first neutral of the game in the Dragon, and uh, I mean, the one-for-one -one bot doesn't really matter that much. So I, I think MU... We haven't really talked about the scaling of this game. I, I'm going to favor TLC a bit on the scaling, because I think that Syndra and Varus is really going to be what dictates this game. But I think a lot of this will come down to can Draven auto-attack or not. I, I know I talked about it a lot earlier on, 
uh, in the draft. Syndra makes it really tough for Draven to auto attack. You have Scatter up. Uh, I, I want to see if Scary Jerry can manage that. Because he is fed. Like, he's gotten yeah. two big kills. He's up a full item on the Varus right now. Sometimes with Draven, it's just about, like, are you able to actually pump out the damage? Because once you group in the team fights, you're somewhat short-ranged and immobile, right? Uh, so it's going to really be on the Scary Jerry to see if he can pilot this well enough. All right, those hands are so creepy. Yeah, I don't like it. It's... <laughs> He's got, like, some Doctor Who stuff going on, you know? Or, uh, ah, Doctor you have Strange, to zoom. Yeah, Doctor Strange. Oh, out of there. Know. Multiverse of Madness. That movie was yeah. not good, but neither is this Baron, unfortunately. Uh, don't tell Josh, though. That's now, uh, TLC. Ooh, Chain of Corruption's not going to land. Yuji comes in, goes after Spyrax. One great thing for Maryville University that's going in their favor is the fact that Scary Jerry, every cash-in, there's no deaths, which means he's getting the max value of those cash-ins. He's not losing any of those adoration stacks. Yep. And he's been getting shutdowns on top of it. So Scary Jerry almost on that third item Niles. already. It's now Niles with the chase onto Romer. The rest of Maryville University are headed into that direction. They got Romer on the wrong side of the map, but Niles cannot hold on for much longer. Able to sidestep another oh, orb. Scary Niles. Jerry realizing he's not on the right side. Now Niles gets dropped by another orb of Romer. They do get Romer's flash and Spyrax is quitting. Uh, so a lot of gold going on in the Oriana. Spyrax will stop the push and respond to the TLC who are going to look mid. It's a loss for Maryville. Niles going down, but honestly, it's not that expensive. I, I will take the solo gold and XP onto Oriana for really kind of delaying what Syndra wants. Uh, the kill on the Syndra hurts. Uh, Rubber's going to hit hard this game, Desirux. I, I, I think that, you know, for MU, it's a, a lot, you know, if they're able to manage Scary Jerry auto attacking, but I think Romer's really the player to watch for TLC. Syndra can be so big later in yeah. these fights just with the, the passive scaling that she gets. And Romer's very far ahead. Get all those Syndra bucks up. Yeah. So 6 2 0. We're almost at that point where Romer just needs one combo on Scary Jerry for Scary Jerry to just be gone from the Yeah, he's four and stacks and away, too, from getting 120. That's a that's a big buff to the AP ratio for Syndra. So Romer in really good spot this game. It could be what Team Liquid need to. Uh, at least stay in this series. A reminder, game number one it did go over to Maryville University, and a lot of that came from the team fighting. A lot of it came from the mid game to late game. TLC, they've been fighting much more even as we've, uh, as we've headed into this mid game, but now we're in a situation where we need to start seeing these resources that they've invested in, like the Syndra, like Romer, to yeah. really start to pay off and find picks on crucial targets like Scary Jerry. And this is a big game too for MU because I, I know on the top uh, they're up 1-0. They're not five and one; they're actually six and one right now. So if they win this series, I mean, a for a collegiate squad to take down an LCS affiliate, I know it would mean a lot for these guys. They failed to do so against MyQuest in a very contested best of three. Um, but if they win, they still have a chance at least maybe taking first or second in the standings, right? Uh, if yeah. MyQuest drops a, a couple games, uh, they would beat them out in game scores still. Uh, so I, I think every win for Maryville still really counts. They're going to try and get the best seed possible for playoffs. And it's a team that I, I would not want to face. Uh, these guys play as oh. a team. They play their, their own way of league. I, I feel like that brand and NACL is very valuable, just knowing what you can do. And I, I think Maryville has really been a pleasant surprise given yeah. expectations coming into this season. And once we saw, like, the last second roster swap, we're like, all right, UG Spyrax, like, Niles is back. Like, this team might be able to do some damage. And I think that... They've really exceeded expectations in terms of where these guys place. It's been a very fun team to watch this split. As the Collegiate boys are uh, doing really well. It's definitely our only Collegiate squad and showing up being at the top of the leaderboards currently. Top of the ladder. Now uh, Dragon is going to spawn. Maryville have first footing onto here. TLC very willing to just concede that at the given moment as uh, the Dragon stacking was slowed down. So Gary Jerry by himself. Here's the dragon. Niles gonna fight it out with Jenkins. Uh, just a small little skirmish right there as Meganar does get popped away. Dragon now secured. A scary Jerry farming stacks. He's up the whole IE on spawn. Oh goodness. TLC. Three items already. Yeah, I mean Maryville, they just have to make sure that this Draven's able to auto. This is a little bit feisty though. All right. Gotta watch for Scary Jerry. Already one pick coming out. Zyko's no gonna Megan. fall. And no follow through from Maryville University. They don't have Spyrax there, so they can't go for a team fight. It was a nice pick for TLC. Yeah, this formation for MU kind of weird. I think at this point, Spyrax needs to be grouped. I mean, the positive yeah. is that Spyrax is getting a lot of resources, but he's going to have to join to use them. 
as he will base after fixing that top wave. Will be no continued push for TLC. As they will retire from the map and just try and find a good deploy. Niles and Jenkins scrapping it out. TLC. As we take a look at the map, they were able to get all the outer towers with that last one being claimed. It does give them a gold lead slightly in their favor, but we know that doesn't mean too much given what that gold lead is and the pressure Maryville are willing to put forward. But now we have Maryville grouping up towards the mid lane as a full five kill, chasing away UG, and TLC will defend the mid. Rummer still has to reset. Niles was, you know, getting a little bit feisty, trying just to stop and delay that. I, I do like that menu. Again, just trying to deny resources from one of the carries for TLC. Shadow Flame now completed for Romer on that phase, so that, that's a very significant buy, and the Syndra will really be the focus, I think, of the next team fight. Uh, whether Syndra can, you know, find some big scatters and slow down MU and enable TLC to just kind of run through the rest of the team, or if Syndra is found early, I, I think scatter is the biggest tool that uh, TLC have in their arsenal for this game in terms of denying what Maryville wants to do. So. Uh, I, I think that Maryville should really be targeting Syndra in this upcoming fight. And for TLC, I mean, what I like is they have a lot of resources to try and protect the Syndra. Even they the do. Crescent Guard can be used as a yeah. defensive tool to pull away from the Syndra. So, Romer, that flash that was burnt earlier, now just coming off cooldown. So, we're in prime position for TLC. That's a good call. Uh, as all sums are up for this upcoming fight, should be explosive. I... Neither team really wants to hit the Baron. I think that it's a bit scary uh, given you know how far ahead each mid laner is. It feels like each mid is really ahead of the game curve. And if you mess up your Baron in that case, uh, you will eat a lot of damage from the you know Magic Resist debuff. And very fed Magic Damage Champions on each side. As Spyrax did just net 16. He's going to go catch the lane that Romer just pushed in as Niles. Does have Mega and is in very deep on the bot side. It's being responded to by Renekton, but I'm curious if TLC decides to try and maybe hit Baron and, uh, to draw the TP of Niles. Jenkins popping the Dominus. Wants to take it to Niles. Will get his flash out. Burns his flash in the process because he thinks he can get this kill, and he absolutely can. As Niles gets taken out, side lane control lost for Maraville. Here it is, TLC, they find the kill. They instantly hit the Baron. We'll see if Jenkins TPs in, and you will get drawn in. All right, Maryville University stepping up, oh, but deep. look at these flank angles. Kim down on a deep Any... one. Same thing with Jenkins. Does Spyrax find it? Does Spyrax know it's coming? Oh, oh he did spot he out did. Jenkins. He sniffed it out. Okay, so, so he big. sees two members of TLC right now. Watch Zyko Gary, and Yuji are still waiting in the wings. Scary Jerry, you got to be careful. You can't be that far forward. Here comes the shockwave, but we'll land on to Kim down. Kim down's going to be the first one to fall. Spyrax will grab that kill. Whirling Death comes out, but it doesn't find much. Two kills picked up by TLC. One lost, and it's TLC who will come out ahead. Honestly, I think I'm used okay with that. They got him off the Baron. They traded some kills. They kept the carries alive. It's a good play overall from TLC. I think Maryville is okay dropping what they did. The big thing for the next fight, Romer and Scary Jerry both flashed. I want to see the team target the other, right? Uh, let's yes. find the members that are down summoner spells and make sure we can execute cleanly. Spyrex usually have flash up. They need to get the Banshee'sville off Romer and attack him. The angle might be around Dragon. TLC headed there. A reminder, this is just going to be the third Drake for TLC, so it's not going to be the pressure for Maryville to have to interact right now. But yeah, look at that goal. Either at Flash. All those cash-ins that Scary Jerry uh, was able to find, all those picks Romer was able to grab. Oh, it's like a... now you have these two monsters on the team that need to be protected by their team. And one of those bodyguards might fall right now. Ultimate going to be used. Psycho still gets caught by the Scatter of the Week. And now Niles, in a bad way, looks for the Blast Plant, provides him some safety, but TLC will not stop grabbing those picks. They don't even want the Dragon. They're just going to sprint straight towards the Baron. As Niles, as though he actually might have to TB back, Spire's going to get a nice chunk of the Kim down here. Oh, oh Kim down. Oh, okay, he down. just got Kim down. Okay. Okay, so support I, I for support. Say. Both supports down. It is. Uh, that's a big investment, though, from Spyrax to drop the ult. I thought he would just go for the poke and save the ult. Now that he's down that tool, that's a, a big one that TLC doesn't have to worry about as Rummer right. gets chunked. TP coming in. Spyrax. Ooh. Spyrax still going forward. Oh, Ooh, Spyrax, he has flash, so he can get out, but he doesn't have a shockwave this time. Kill, force to use the Crescent Guard, able to deny some of that damage. Scary Jerry on the angle, looking for Romer. Here comes Niles, throwing out that boomerang, getting the slow Big onto scatter. Romer. Romer's very, very low right now, but so is Niles, as he's going to grab some of the fruits and stop 
the Baron attempt. But look at Jenkins. Ultimate used by Niles. Wants to get out. And he will be able to escape. That's a good stall by Niles. I mean, he just pushed them up. They actually got mid-outer from that. And Maryville, they could go hit the dragon if they want. But TLC wants to keep them back out on the oh, map. Going again. They reset Roamer and TPM back in. It's round two. You thought the cage match was in LCS. Nah, it's in NACL. Niles, Here no come Maryville. Yuji so damn low. This is going to be a hard still. If Yuji's going to be able to pull it off. Maryville University still positioning forward. Hook able to land onto Kim down. Yuji looking for the angle. Jenkins will hop right over the wall. Kick comes out. Here it comes. Sonic Wave! It's stolen! Yuji grabs the Baron! A pick on the kill! No Kill's going to fall! Kim down critically low pull in the gator! Get him and make some damn boots! Maryville University, they get the upset on the play! What a crazy flip from Yuji. He hits the smite against Keel, and now TLC's in shambles. Romer, no flash being TP'd upon. He finds the support. Stand aside onto Romer. Spyrax has arrived. Spyrax is ready. Throws the ball out, but the slow's too much, and Yuji has gone for the siege. The dragon's still up in all this, too, which is wild. Yuji is going to take the turret. Let's get another look. All eyes on to Yuji. So he Q, he Sonic waves this, and Jenkins like, that's fine. I'm going to keep him out. Yuji finds the kick. The shield comes in. Yuji has to take it. Combos with Spyrax to find the spine over the wall. Then Flash W's away. Kill melts. And the rest of the fight's good. TLC's two split. Look at where Spawn and Roamer are at. They can't fight up here. As Jenkins was using himself to keep him out of the pit. Spawn Roamer were never able to walk past the Baron. Walk past Niles. And MU end up cleaning up. Another great use of, like, just zoning and flights and health bars, yes. man. TLC playing too fast, get punished again. Oh, God, what an incredible steal by Yuji. This that is was someone, ridiculous. We talked about it earlier, always in the conversation when it comes to that MVP. Good God, man, he wants the damn title this time. Yuji, excellent plays coming out from the Maryville jungler. That was ridiculous from the Mongolian monster himself as manages to sneak that Baron away from TLC and Kiel. That's a huge turning point in this game, too. Is this gold spike could have easily been in TLC's oh. favor, you know? They pick up that Baron, they get a dragon. This game, they are sitting on the scaling of the Cinder. It's in their control, but MU and together take the Baron away, get themselves that soul point, and are in good shape now in this game. Control of the bot side jungle coming out from Maryville University while they send Niles over to the top lane to begin the side lane push. You can tell TLC are looking for their angle, but they need to get vision control ahead of time. A lot of this is going to rely on Roamer. A lot of this is going to rely on Spawn. Yeah. Can you get the scout of the week? Can you get the chain of corruptions? Roamer does have Flash coming back up in a second, so we will have it for the next fight. That's significant. I think it makes it really difficult for MU to try and siege these inhibitor turrets. So we are going to see Keel miss out on a combo. That's a good find on the Niles, though. Shockwave to answer. Yeah, that means this turret's going down. A nice Shockwave takes a lot of HP from TLC. Oh. And it's spreading them thin. Jerry, Jerry. They're having a hard time defending as another tower goes down, and that's inhibitor popped by Maryville University. I really like that all from Scary Jerry, just taking the health away. I think MU understands that without Shockwave, they can't fight. So it's about uh, really the game of Poke. And MU yeah. doing a good job of that. They already have one inhibitor down. Gary Cherry does catch the wind. Yeah. Comes lightning as Niles. Hold on. Uh, Niles trying to get that Megnar form in a hurry. Over the wall, flashing in. Yeah, Niles has to flash out. The catch on a rover. Scary Jerry kills him. And now looking for the return. It's a shutdown picked. Uh, Carry is down, and his name is Scary Jerry. Can Spyrax do the rest to clean up this fight for Maryville University? And TLC are feeling like they might have an angle to defend right now. Kill goes forward. Spawn still able to deny a lot of those sonic waves. Instead, going right after Kill. Shockwave pulls him in. Jenkins defends his swamp, but Niles and Spawn will claim it. Triple kill for Spyrax and Maryville University. Fight tooth and nail to take down the LCS affiliate with an ace found with the Nexus in flames. It's going to be Maryville 2 0. What a fun series from MU. Close, honestly, between both these teams, but Maryville were the ones that pulled off the big plays to drag things back into their advantage at the end of both of these games. And honestly, real props to Spyrax and, and all of MU with how they played that one out. Spyrax, he was catching so many sideways where TLC were able to, you know, find some plays, pick people, get a health bar advantage here and there. And then when he grouped after they got that Baron, he did so much work yes. in those fights, especially after Scary Jerry went down. Also, Scary Jerry, he traded himself for the Cinder and got a lot of damage down in those fights. 
I really like how he played that one out. Psycho hit the two big hooks on both carries in that last uh, kind of skirmish to make sure they closed that one out. And Maryville, I mean, they got a Baron and shut each game down right away. That's stuff that we used to expect out of the top challengers teams we have in TLC. Maryville continue well to make the case for themselves. So they are one of the top challengers teams that we have in the league. The very convincing win against the TLC that looks much stronger. But a 2-0 for MU nonetheless. This. Look at this from Yuji. Cubby, break it down, man. It's the combo. You're going to see Spyrax as Yuji goes in here. He's going to cast out that Shockwave. 356. Wow. Yuji sneaks in that smite. As these guys, their third year playing together now in the collegiate colors instead of with FlyQuest challengers who are sitting as our top dogs, but Yuji and Spyrax right under them still staying competitive with their old LCS colors. Incredible play coming out from this squad. Uh, uh, something else you had said is... Uh... Scary Jerry gave his life on that last play. That was his only death. He gave his life for the finishing play. So yeah, he, he gave his life to remove the Syndra. We were talking about how important Syndra yeah. was to TLC's comp this entire time. That's very worth. And Scary Jerry continues to be a really impressive marksman, man. I, I think this, yeah. like where he was last summer to now, a lot of credit goes over to him and Zyko with how they've been able to level up. And it's exciting to watch. This is going to be a tough team and a tough out in playoffs as they're 7-1 and one, and one series away from wrapping up this regular season. You know, with how many wins they've had, we've had interviews across the board with Maryville University and all their players. Why don't we get some interviews with uh, the director and clerky? We're going to throw it over to Short Break when we return. We'll have him on the other side. Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. Try the warm and delicious Footlong Cookie, Footlong Pretzel, or Footlong Churro. Welcome back, everyone. I am joined with Clerky from Maryville University. Happy to talk about the program. Happy to talk about the boys. Clerky, how you doing? Pretty good. How about yourself, boys? Oh, we're, we're hyped up after that last game. Did you see that still from Yuji? Did you see yeah. that still from Yuji? That was mm, crazy. Good, good stuff, play. man. Good play. Good stuff. So first thing I want to personally ask you is just coming in from 2023 and the performance Maryville had to seeing what has uh, what Maryville has shaped into in 2024, an absolute dominant beast. How's it feel, man? How's the experience been watching this team grow? It's been amazing. I mean, last last summer was pretty stressful, um, but it's nice to know that we had all the pieces there, right? We just had to kind of assemble them the right way and it's paying off now. The guys have a long leash. They don't have a coach, so they're doing it themselves. I can't claim any credit. It's just really five guys coming together and making it happen. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, it's been fun to watch. I, I, it's crazy to think that you guys are second in Challengers League, a league that used to be filled with LCS affiliates, and you guys were trying to compete against them. Uh, you just beat TLC, one of the LCS affiliate teams. I don't know if Maryville's, like, done that before with a secondary team. I think it's the first time for you guys. Uh, yeah, like, I mean... What's that mean to you? Is someone that, like, used to be, you know, a, a team GM uh, working with, you know, uh, United and Complexity and the LCS? Like, what's it mean to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys with your collegiate squad? Yeah, so I mean, it's pretty crazy seeing a bunch of guys that are that are getting a three five, taking full credit hours, uh, competing at this level. Uh, prior, uh, last time I was here, it was with the United. Uh, we had Dandy and GBM on that roster, Licorice, Zazel, and Deathly. So mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty nuts. We were in a house in LA all day, eat, sleep, drink, league, and uh, were able to do the same quality of games uh while while attending school and getting the degrees it's, it's good stuff and i'm excited to see where it, where it goes you know this is i would say this so, is the best the best uh quality our league team's ever been in our 10-year history at maryville as well so uh, and like for me that's very, crazy because like looking at collegiate right now i think collegiate's the most competitive it's ever been like yeah. we have the core slew on wild card i know that's a team that you guys have a lot of respect for in your backyard Winthrop were the ones winning everything in fall, and they're still competing at a really high level. Like, what's it like stepping into now the Sea Law season and looking at all these schools who have really, you know, come to compete this split? Yeah, so we try to time our load when we compete because uh, we we are the only collegiate team that competes in NACL currently. So fall, we I mean, we obviously try to win every event that we can in fall, but we aren't going to put as much stock into fall as we were as we are spring. Uh, so it'll be really interesting to see. Uh, how we stack up. I mean, obviously we're very confident. Uh, you can see how we're playing right now. Um, but I think Sea Law will definitely be the hardest it's ever been. Unclear whether or not, it, I don't think it's gonna be fearless. So it's gonna change the dynamic a little bit uh, strategically. Uh, but I think we're in a good spot. There's a lot of talented programs out there and it's, it's nice to uh, have a lot of competition at that level, you know? One thing I've always loved about Maryville is the camaraderie this squad always has. They, they really do feel like a band of brothers always playing together. So I want you to talk to me about some of the uh, values uh, that you look to instill into your players that has really made this environment flourish so much. Yeah, so throughout my esports career, um, I've had a lot of teams that have a hard time uh, working through conflict. I would say that uh, this roster uh, if there is ever any conflict, they're very uh, forthcoming about it, and they make sure that um, they're all focused on the, the on the same goal. They remind themselves of that, and they're able to, to kind of put things aside. I know we had a bit of a rocky fall with our bot lane, for example, and Jerry and Zyka. I mean, they had a meeting, they figured it out. Now they're doing two v twos all day, every day, uh, trying to be the best bot lane they can be. So um, I think that that's kind of the core of it. Um, everybody's kind of fighting for the same thing. Uh, we don't have five different players going different directions. We have five players going one direction, and I don't think we've had that in a while, and it, and it shows. I I know we're running out of time here. I do want to sneak in real quick, just because you mentioned Rocky Fall. I know rock climbing is big for you guys in the squad. <laughs> Who's leveled up the most rock climbing wise? Who, who, who are you scared of on the team? You know, starting to do those like V V fours, V fives. Well, Jerry's the best climber. He's better than me, but so I'm trying to catch okay. up to him. He's uh. Okay. He's, he's been telling me, he's like, I, I want to go LCS this summer. So he's been taking a little bit of a break from climbing. He's been uh, honing the league skills. So I'm using this time to, to get in the gym and, and catch up, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, I think that's a win-win all around, man. For sure. Yeah, for you got sure. any shout-outs before we let you go? Um, Shout-out to the boys. Uh, I know a lot of people want to, like, like, create narratives around collegiate, like what the right way is to build a team, what the right way is to run a team. But really, it's all, it's all the boys. It's not my doing. You can see I'm at my house. I'm not up at the lab. I realized earlier this year that me being there and hovering might not be the best thing for the team. Just let them rip, do their job, and, and they're running the table right now. So uh, proud of the team. We're excited to see where the, where it goes, and uh, we'll go from there. I would shout out to the university for obviously supporting us. They're a damn good team to be proud of, man. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for the interview and giving some in insights of how Maryville University works. And uh, wish your team the best of luck in the rest of the season. Not that they really do need it, though, brother. Yeah, thanks for having me, boys. Next interview will be on stage when we uh, win, win the league, you know? 
Oh, that that sounds great, you heard man. Heard here first. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. It's good to see you as always, man. Thanks for talking. Yeah. All, All right. right, we're gonna throw it over a short break. When we return, we'll get into our second series of the day: Fear versus AOE. They said it couldn't be done. They said the world would never accept a cookie this long, or a churro, and probably not a pretzel either. They also said, under no circumstances should those really long and delicious treats be wildly affordable. To which we said, but we already made them. And they are. Introducing the incredible new footlong sidekicks. Get one at Subway today. LCS players are some of the best that North America has to offer. But did they start out that way? Did they just wake up one morning and decide they were LCS ready? No, of course not. They all had to start somewhere. And that where, for most of the players that you've seen, was here, in the NACL. And while NACL stands for the North American Challengers League, it also stands for our core fundamental tenets, being new and old competitors learning. And that has been our fundamental belief since this league's inception, and has led to the success of many players who needed no introduction. Their stories differ younger players looking to or just starting to make their mark here in the LCS or you have older more experienced players trying to breathe new life in their careers after minor or significant dips. What matters is that NACL is not where stories end, it's where they begin. And you're wondering, how do they do this? How do these players grind up for the first time? How do they make a comeback after falling off? Well, for one thing, the NACL is on life patch much like the LCS. On top of that, we have something that they don't, and that is Fearless Draft. Fearless Draft, if you don't know, is a setup where that when a team picks a champion, that champion is no longer available for the rest of the series. Something that was implemented in hopes to improve champion flexibility in our players and strategic depth in our coaches. And it's something that our teams have already taken to quite well. All right, let's bring it back to the players. Even at this moment, they are grinding it out in the NACL showing their stuff, honing their skills, in hopes that they can promote to the LCS and make it to that big stage. And we have names that you should be very excited about as an LCS viewer, because you may see them sooner than you think. And if you wanna get ahead on that knowledge, and you wanna to get to know the future of the LCS, all you have to do is watch. 